Andrew Huberman, a professor of neuroscience and a podcasting superstar, seems to be the primary go-to source for millions of people around the globe who want to learn about neuroscience, brain performance, well-being, productivity, and much, much more. While he definitely seems one of the most trustworthy influencers in this field, can you really trust him? What is his exact motivation and what separates him from the other health influencers? Can you just take everything he says as an absolute truth or do you still need to make your own research because he is, after all, just a human being? Let's get to know Dr. Andrew Huberman. Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Greg and I'm a certified brain health professional. On this channel, we help professionals achieve peak brain performance. So if this interests you, then subscribe below and join our amazing community. Now, why on earth would a certified brain health professional like myself, who isn't a doctor of neuroscience, even had the guts to talk about someone like Dr. Huberman? And why should you even listen to me? Well, I've been following Huberman since his podcasting debut in January 2021, when he launched his podcast Huberman Lab. And from the very first episode, I knew this podcast was probably going to explode. Now his approach, his extensive knowledge, and his way of communication made him immediately stand out from the other researchers, brain experts, and biohackers. Now, the one major thing that seems to separate Huberman from the rest is that he puts science first and then his opinion second, and not the other way around. I'm not a medical doctor, I'm a professor, so I don't prescribe anything, I profess things, I have my beliefs, but the podcast is for information purposes. I do hope that the tools that we discuss will be of benefit to you, but as always, you should talk to your doctor or healthcare provider about any tools that you plan to add or are looking to explore, as well as anything that you might look to remove from your daily protocols. In other words, don't change anything without consulting an expert first. You're responsible for your health, not me. And I say this not just to protect me, but also to protect you. So if you listen to his podcast, you're not going to hear weird and unimportant anecdotes as you'd hear on most other similar podcasts or YouTube channels. But can one person even though he's a professor at Stanford University and has a small team of researchers, have enough know-how to talk about topics like brain performance, sleeping, dreaming, exercising, diet, emotions, mastering stress, growing bigger muscles, fasting, mindset, gratitude, sugar, ice baths, and many, many more? Well, before I answer that, let's check why is he so trustworthy and why you should even listen to him. Now, the first thing that makes Andrew Huberman so trustworthy is the fact that he is a neuroscientist and a professor at Stanford University. Now, anyone who is a neuroscientist and a professor at such a reputable university has a massive advantage over everyone, no matter how good of a professor he is or how knowledgeable he is. I personally believe that if you want to be a professor at Stanford University, you need to stand out and be a really wise person. The However, if you were the worst student of neuroscience ever, but for some reason you would manage to secure a job as a professor at such a great university, well, people would still immediately find you extremely trustworthy and almost no one would doubt you. Well, maybe there would be some exceptions like myself, but that's about it. So even though he has this great reputation, it's way more important to actually fact check what he's saying. Now, the second thing that makes him trustworthy is that it seems that his motivation is to teach people and share free and useful resources and tools to improve brain performance and health. Now, I listened to Katie Type A, who also wondered if you could trust Andrew Huberman. And so taking all of these factors into account, let's return now to the premise of this video, which really has to do with trust. And she said that she trusted him because she knew exactly what motivates him. I gotta say the reason I trust Huberman over a lot of other podcasters, it comes down to one very simple thing, motivation. I trust him because I know what motivates him. As a matter of fact, Huberman starts each episode explaining that he's here to profess and share useful tips with others. Well, while I get what Katie meant and I 100% agree with her, aren't most podcasters and YouTubers saying exactly the same thing? So when Huberman says he's trying to help people, everyone says, wow, that's so cool. 
But when Joe Rogan or Dave Asprey say the same thing, what, are they lying? Or are they just trying to sell their supplements? I mean, where is the difference? Now, one could say, well, Dave and Joe often promote their own products and products from many other brands. And that's true. But so does Andrew Huberman. At the beginning of his podcast, he always promotes his sponsors like Inside Tracker, Thorn Supplements, Thesis Nootropics, and so on. Is something wrong with that? Well, in my opinion, not at all. But what do you think? Let me know in the comment section below. So again, he can promote products from other brands, including some products that are clearly not as good as they seem to be. Trust me, I've done my research. While others can't. Well, last but not least, many of his guests seem to be amazing experts in their fields of research. I knew Dr. Matthew Walker, Dr. Duncan French, and Dr. David A. Sinclair. Now, I don't know other guests that he brought on the show, but what I know is the huge controversy around David Sinclair and the research he and his team have done. Now, I've talked to many, many experts who completely disagree with some of the findings of Dr. Sinclair. Now, obviously, that's not Huberman's fault, but again, he's the one inviting guests on his podcast. And even though most of them seem trustworthy, that doesn't mean that all of them are. That's just how it is when you work with people. Now, before we talk about why is Dr. Huberman such a success story, and if you should listen to him, let's talk about a couple of things that bother me a lot. Well, I've done my share of scientific research in the field of nootropics, brain performance, nutrition, sleep, etc. And I've done the research in the same way as Dr. Huberman. So, I've gathered the best studies, I read them, I analyzed them, and came up with conclusions. Now, for someone with a master's degree like myself, reading and analyzing studies is not such a hard thing, but it is super time consuming. In addition, I have a team of different experts in my company. There's a doctor of psychology, I have a performance psychologist, one certified nutritionist, but I also work with a doctor of biology, a doctor of biochemistry, and a few other experts. Now, despite this expert team, I have figured out that it's really hard to do detailed and complete research on a particular topic because there are so many studies out there. If you just want to read and analyze all research about ashwagandha, it would take you days, if not weeks of full-time work to do just that. And that just one single nootropic. And that includes only scientific research and no other research like understanding why Ayurvedic medicine is using this nootropic, why ancient healers used it, etc. So I'm not saying that he and his team didn't do a detailed and complete research of all the topics they cover, but it is highly unlikely they did it. And the result of that is a lack of deep understanding of nootropics, for example, or nutrition. Maybe that's why he's been eating steaks and butter and saying his lipid profiles are just fine. Typically train late morning. Um, if I train really hard, if it's resistance training, then I'll have you know, a bowl of rice or a bowl of oatmeal or something. And I, I like butter. So I'll put a pat of butter in there and I don't, my blood pro, lipid profiles are just fine. So he's trying to optimize his performance to the maximum, but when it comes to nutrition, just fine seems to be a new standard. Besides, I've been researching tropics since 2015, and I still believe I understand so little about those compounds that my team has to check every single sentence I'm going to say in a video. Now, the second problem with that is quite obvious. After watching some of his podcasts, I found some obvious mistakes that he made, especially when he talked about nootropics, which is my main area of interest. He made some statements that I believe are not entirely true about nootropics, but even more, he covered the topic of nootropics very briefly and not in detail enough to give his listeners a clear understanding of good and bad nootropics. He also mentioned that nootropics are also called smart drugs, which they are, but only by people who don't understand the difference between smart drugs and nootropics. In reality, smart drugs are drugs, and nootropics are nootropics. And lastly, the nootropic protocol that he shared is far from an optimal one, in my opinion. And the last problem I noticed was that, obviously, he has this 100% scientific approach to understanding how your brain and body work. He finds the scientific studies, he reads them, he shares the findings, and that's about it. Now, even though I'm a hardcore facts guy, I'm starting to understand that scientific research is not just often wrong or manipulated, but it is just one part of the story. Having said this, I'm starting to believe that there are many things you can't just explain by scientific research. 
In a way, the scientific approach is just one approach among many to understanding life. Now, what I'm trying to say is, if something has been proven to work in a laboratory, that doesn't mean it doesn't work in real life, or vice versa. So putting science first is the way to go, in my opinion, of course. But what I'd like to hear more is a broad approach to research. By the way, guys, do you want to know how well does your brain perform? Go for a free assessment, link in the description below, and get your brain performance score. So why should you listen to Andrew Huberman? Now, besides the fact that Andrew Huberman made some mistakes, and I mean, who didn't, there are tons of things you can learn from him. Since he often puts science first and opinion second, like we do here at your inception, maybe with the exception of videos like this one, he definitely is way more trustworthy than many other health podcasters and YouTubers. Besides, even though he often shares his experience with a particular protocol or a tool, he always recommends consulting your doctor first before trying anything new. He does this mainly to protect himself, of course, and there's rarely any value in consulting your doctors about advanced stuff he talks about because, well, let's be honest, if doctors had this know-how, he wouldn't have been such a success. But anyway, I 100% support such thinking compared to some other self-proclaimed experts who guarantee you that if you follow their routine, you'll achieve this God mode performance and whatnot. He also seems to take time for the research about the topics he's already an expert in, anything related to neuroscience. But when it comes to some other broad topics like nutrition, where you'd need to go over hundreds of thousands of studies, like Dr. Greger did at Nutritional Facts, to really understand what's good for you and what not. And no, eating steaks is really not healthy, especially if you care about your brain performance. I think he should leave those topics to real experts. Let them do the talk. Overall, I love learning from Dr. Andrew Huberman. And I think if we had more experts like him and less self-proclaimed I know with all gurus, people would be less confused and generally healthier. So thumbs up. Now, if you're ready to boost your brain performance with scientifically proven hacks, watch my next video up here. Thank you guys and I hope to see you soon again. Stay well.